why is it so important for you to be a candidate to be the president of Singapore? Knowing very well that there might not be very much you can do in actual terms, even if you're elected. Number two, knowing very well that the last time you participated in 2011, you lost your deposit. So why is this so important for you, even though the risks are high? Uh, the most important uh, is that I offer the chance for the, for the people to vote for a president that is independent of the ruling party. Uh, that's the most important. And uh, to some extent, it was also driven by fate. Because according to the rules of 2011, I would have been disqualified now because it's 15 years and I would have passed 15 years since I left NTUC income. But for some unknown reason, the government changed it to 20 years. That made me qualify. Uh, and earlier on, I was quite happy for Josh Go to be the candidate as independent. Uh, but when it was quite clear that he might not qualify, I offered myself uh, as the candidate. And if there were any other candidate that is independent of the government, uh, I would prefer to step aside uh, and enjoy my retirement. <laughs> <laughs> because some people are of the view that it's your ego, misplaced ego, some say, that is making you contest, even though your chances of winning are not very high. I think the most important uh, is the, to give the people uh, the choice to vote for an independent president. Uh, my ego is uh, not the factor, not the important factor. In fact, I would prefer to have an easy life. But aren't you taking another big risk of going in there and all the negative things coming up against you. Uh, because it, when, you, when you contest for a seat in public office, it's not going to be always smooth sailing. Uh, yes, uh, I have experienced uh, uh, the uh, criticism and uh, I think some are quite unfair, uh, but it's okay. Uh, this is all part of the process of uh, uh, standing for election in the public office. Huh? My most important point, my most driving point is to give the people a choice. Do you want an independent president? And if the majority, majority of them say yes, uh, then they vote for me. So that's the most important factor. Uh, the, the risk of being attacked, uh, sometimes I consider unfairly, uh, that is part of the risk. Uh, but I think the, the goal, the goal uh, of serving uh, the wishes of large numbers of people, that goal is more important. And as I go into the contest, it becomes quite clear there is an over, overwhelming uh, segment of the population that says, Mr. Tan, thank you for coming forward. Uh, we need to have, to have a choice. We don't want more of the same. A president that is closely associated with the ruling government. So, so I'm responding to that choice. You said overwhelming. You get the sense it's overwhelming. How do you get that sense? Uh, as I walk around the market, as I go on the train ride, I meet uh, several hundred people every day on my walkabout. And uh, I would say it's overwhelming. Uh, many of them say they know me. In fact, one of the things I, I normally ask them is, do you recognize me? And they say, oh yeah, you're Mr. Tan, you're from NTUC. Uh, now, of course, this is the older generation because they know me. Uh, the younger generation may not know me that well, uh, but I do get to also, as I walk uh, on the road and give out my campaign flyer, young people also recognize me, and I feel quite uh, heartened. That, uh, and they recognize me in a very positive way. Some of them tell me that uh, uh, they like my message, uh, that I'm trying to make life better for them, because they are also struggling with uh, high cost of living, uh, housing un unaffordable, and also jobs. Whether the jobs uh, are available, uh, can they get jobs that pay well? So they are also struggling. So the young people who know about my message, they are very positive. 
but my aim is to reach out to more young people. Okay, let's get down to the crux of the matter. You said that you want to improve people's lives, etc., etc., which is which is very laudable. The question is, how are you going to actually achieve that, given the fact that the president is actually uh, a titular head of the, of the state? The president is not the head of government. So, you know, given the limitations uh, as to what you can do and how much you can do, how do you plan to change policies? Uh, I must recognize uh, that there is this limitation and I have been reminded many times by the uh, elections department uh, that these are the restrictions. But I, I, I see the president as being uh, uh, the person who can uh, convey the, the hardship and the aspirations of the people. Uh, and when these are given to me, I would like to convey them to, uh, privately uh, to the government. And I do believe uh, the goals that I have are similar to the goals of the government. The government also wants to improve the lives of people. And the government also wants to bring down inflation, make housing affordable. Uh, I, I see that they are also genuinely, genuinely pursuing the same goal. Uh, but of course, uh, when you want to achieve success, you need to try from different angles. So the government has one angle, uh, which seems to have, I think they are struggling. They don't seem to work. Uh, I want to offer to the government another angle. Uh, and during my 30 years in NTUC income, uh, I always look at a problem, understand the problem, and find some way out of the box. It's not the normal traditional approach. And after trying one, two times, it becomes very successful. That's how I can build the NTUC income to grow 600 times. Uh, of course, part of this is due to the economic growth. Uh, other companies also grow. Uh, NTUC income grow faster, bigger. And that's because I consider myself to be a good problem solver. Uh, maybe that's due to my actual training that I can analyze and I can understand what are the key elements uh, to, to solve a problem. So I don't have a track record. And I hope that uh, my experience will be useful to the government. After all, we are pursuing the same goal. I'm sure the government wants to improve people's lives. I'm sure they want to find a way to bring down the cost of living. So as the president, I would have, I was told, weekly conversation with the prime minister. That would be the channel. And I think the prime minister is also a, a, a quite sensible man. Uh, therefore, maybe when we have a dialogue, uh, I hope, I'm positive uh, that uh, a collaborative approach can bring results, better better results for the people. But I get the sense that you are viewed not as an insider, you're viewed, as you yourself said, as the outsider. When you are the, when you're viewed as the outsider, even if you become president, the chances of you having fruitful, constructive discussions leading to better outcomes, for example, from your point of view, may not be that easy. I know, I agree with that, uh, uh, that statement. Uh, it's easy for the president uh, to do his job if he has the same thinking as the government, all right? Because they, are, they all have been working together, but this is, this is the current outcome. And if we want a different outcome, especially uh, to make, uh, uh, to help bring down the cost of living and other factors, we need to, have, we need to try something different. So I bring uh, to the uh, government, uh, I bring to the office of the president, uh, a different perspective. What can be done? But the goals are still the same. My goals and the goals of the government are still the same. But we've got two different perspectives. And I think it's better uh, rather than continue life as before. I mean, the president and the government have the same thinking. In which case, the president just is a figurehead. You, you describe as a title, titular figurehead. Instead of that, uh, I think the president can do something more uh, to be the catalyst for change. 
and it's necessary change uh, for the uh, to improve the lives of the people. And uh, it don't have to be confrontational uh, because the goals are the same, and I can be quite persuasive. <laughs> I can be quite convincing uh, because uh, we just lay down the facts, and we can say you have tried this approach. Here's another approach that might work. Uh, so those are those are my uh, my. I will bring that to the office, and I hope uh, that some of this can work well. Your campaign didn't start off very smoothly because of some of the statements that you made that obviously and understandably hurt uh, aware and other women, right? uh, suggesting that you're not woke enough. Uh, I, I can understand where they're coming from. In fact, I was quite taken aback by some of those posts that you had put you know, about pretty girls, and then further going to justify that that those who, women who don't have a, who have a problem with what you said, maybe are not that pretty. To you, it may be funny, but to, to women out there, it may not be very funny. What made you react to it that way? Uh, okay, I think uh, I have been misunderstood. Mm. And for those who feel offended uh, by by my remarks, I send them my apologies. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, uh, the the polls uh, were made over several years, and most of them were during COVID. And when I during COVID, I went for long walks. It was quite boring, uh, so I, I just took some posts. I never took a post of any uh, woman individually. Uh, I did take some posts of from the internet. Of, uh, of of uh, some uh, some girls, but they were not they were not individuals, and they were not specific individuals. Uh, so uh, I'm rather uh, sad that some of those were misused. But I, I want to say to those who are offended, my sincere apologies. What's the lesson for you in this? If, uh, if there's one. Okay, I think uh, the the lesson must be I think uh, uh, don't be so uh, don't be so mischievous. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I want to uh, create some light-hearted uh, material, uh, light-hearted material to generate interest in my blog. Uh, but I must, I want to share with you. Mm. Which uh, no, right now I have a blog that is sixty-five thousand followers, so it's called uh, I'm called uh, influencer six times, huh? and I build this uh, over a period of time uh, by posting in light-hearted material. Are they watching it because they're happy or they're angry? Uh, I'm sure they I'm sure the majority are happy because I see from the comments, very positive comments from these people. But I want to actually bring a message uh, uh, that's quite important uh, uh, to, uh, to in today's uh, when many uh, young people uh, are delaying the marriage and some don't want to get married. Family values, starting a family, uh, are very important. It's very important. And I could say that uh, one of my joy uh, is to spend time with my grandchildren. And right now, the elder grandchildren have spent time with me and now they are busy studying and so on. My two youngest uh, grandchildren, uh, they, they really uh, make me feel very happy to be with them. Uh, so this is, I think, the family value that I, I like to convey this to the public, something worthwhile. Compared to the other two presidential candidates, you're not as eloquent. You're not as internationally exposed. You know, you don't have that, that smoothness, so to speak, in the way you articulate. Uh, put bluntly, uh, you are an uh, uncut diamond. Uh, now, again, uh, uh, let me uh, give the uh, actual fact. Uh, for 20 years, when I was in NTUC, uh, I was in the board of directors of an international federation of uh, large insurance companies. But I'm on the board of directors, and for five years, I was the chairman. Uh, and uh, I attended board meetings and conferences. Uh, and although NTUC income is small relative to 
companies in other countries like Japan, America, Germany. Uh, I got the chance to be elected as the chairman. Now, the, my uh, way of speaking uh, is Singaporean way, not English, uh, but it's not the same as American English or British English. Okay, uh, I think my strength in communication is I say things that people can understand without the accent and, and, and so on, without appearing to be following the Americans or the British accent. I say things that, that people can understand. And I think most people actually find me quite eloquent and, and they understand my, my message. I think it's more important uh, that your message come across uh, and uh, the comments I get from the public is they understand what I'm thinking, uh, what my views are. And you say, Mr. Tan, I followed you for 10, 15 years. I really understand what you stand for. I may not agree with all of them, but I agree with most of them. And this is, I will give you my vote. So how do you think you've become this man? Uh, you, know, you said you understand the ground, you understand feelings, you empathize. How did you become this? Well, I was born in a poor family. I grew up uh, in, uh, in a normal uh, uh, environment where majority of Singaporeans are. Uh, even though I was in Raffles Institution, uh, that's where people from poor family from all the uh, major ethnic groups come. Uh, so therefore, that's, that's my environment. So I'm very much part of that ordinary people in Singapore. I'm certainly not part of the, the special class we call the elite. Uh, so this is uh, what, what, what I am. Even you dropped out of school and the, uh, after sec four. Don't say drop out. Wow. I, I, I left school. Left school. Uh, I left school. Uh, I was one of the top students. Uh, I, I left school because. Did you finish your. your I, I finished my. Own, uh, at that time, it was called school certificate. Today, it's called O level. I was uh, uh, among the, the top few students in Raffles. So when I uh, decided to leave school, the principal called me. Kim uh, Lien. If your family is poor, the school can give you a bursary to help you through the uh, help you through uh, paying for the school fees. So I told the principal, a very kind gentleman called Mr. Jesu Dasen, uh, and he's and I told him, uh, but that bursary doesn't allow me to give an allowance to my family. So I came up to work. And how did you get into uh, actual science? Uh, well, the first, uh, uh, the principal was actually very kind. Uh, he gave a call uh, to his friend, who is another Indian, uh, and said, uh, here's the bright boy, uh, would you take him into a company? And that, uh, uh, that gentleman, uh, who is a general manager of a big insurance company, offered me a job as a clerk with a monthly salary of $180. <laughs> Which in those days was adequate. Uh, I probably spent one third of it and give two thirds to my parents to take care of the family. And so, how did you become an actualist? Uh, okay, uh, uh, I, uh, I work uh, in the insurance company for three years and then I go to other jobs. Uh, so, I study at night. Uh, fortunately for me, uh, those uh, subjects, the actual subjects, were quite easy to me. And they were very difficult for other people because you need a special skill in mathematics and more important, logical thinking. And also quite important, you know, the command of English, the language, because you have to express ideas in, in the written language. So to me, I happen to have this skill you know, of understanding how to communicate uh, and uh, the uh, mathematics and the logic. So to me, it was very easy. So Mr. Tan, as you would be aware, um, Mr. Ng Kok Song has characterized as ganging up, uh, you know, and of course he was referring to uh, the support that you've got now from Dr. Tan Cheng Bok, 
and Mr. Panji Singh, who were federal candidates in the 2011 presidential race. Right? What's your response to this? I think it's not fair for Mr. Ng uh, to describe it as standing up. Uh, these are two respectable individuals. Uh, they share the same goal uh, to elect an independent president, which is my platform. And they're coming in in their individual capacity. Uh, and uh, uh, we should uh, uh, respect that their intentions are for a uh, independent president. And what about uh, the characterization that you are politicizing the presidential campaign, which should be above politics? Uh, I am not. Uh, I think uh, my goal is uh, uh, to offer to the people uh, a uh, the choice of an independent president and to describe it as a politicizing, I think it's not a fair description. So, to wrap up this conversation, what do you think are your chances? <clears throat> right as of now, uh, I think I got uh, a good chance, maybe 50-50, and I hope 51%, 49, I think that's a chance. Uh, I do get uh, uh, very good uh, indicators from the social media uh, about large numbers of people who like the idea of an independent president. Uh, they are aware that the president has got limitations, but they say, Mr. Tan, thank you for trying to do what you can. To, to achieve those goals. Mr. Tan, wish you all the best. Thank you.